You ever notice how marriage is like a parking space? The good ones are taken and the rest are handicapped. Now don't get your knickers in a twist, I'm just making an observation here. So let's dive into this conundrum. This riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma that we lovingly call marriage. You see, marriage ain't no walk in the park, folks. It's more like navigating through a minefield while blindfolded. At times, it feels like you're in the middle of Times Square, trying to find a decent parking spot, but all you see are no parking signs or spots already occupied by those flashy sports cars. And you're there, stuck with your reliable but not so glamorous minivan, circling the block over and over again, hoping to find that golden spot. But here's the kicker. The moment you actually start looking for that parking spot, it seems like every Tom, Dick, and Harry is also on the hunt. It's like they smell your desperation or something. And isn't that just like marriage? The moment you decide you're ready to settle down, every potential partner seems to be running in the opposite direction or already taken. Now you might think, hey, I'll just take what I can get. But let me tell you, settling for that handicapped spot might land you with a hefty fine or worse, a towed away heart. So what's a guy or gal to do? Well, I'm not here to give you advice, just to shed some light on this crazy thing we call marriage. And maybe, just maybe, you'll see that it's not about finding the perfect parking spot, but about enjoying the ride. And remember folks, the grass ain't always greener on the other side. Sometimes it's just astroturf. So before you go rushing into something as serious as marriage, take a step back and ask yourself, do I really want to park here for the rest of my life? So you think you got it all figured out, huh? Well, stick around, cause we ain't done yet. Ever chased a cat? You run after it, it runs away. You sit down, ignore it, and bam, it's on your lap. Marriage, my friends, ain't any different. Now let's break this down. You see, in the game of love, the more you chase, the faster your significant other runs. It's like trying to catch a greased pig at a county fair. You get all muddy, but the pig's still running. So why do we keep doing it? Well, we're all suckers for the chase, aren't we? It's in our nature. We see something we want, and we go after it like a dog after a bone. But here's the catch. When it comes to matters of the heart, this chasing business often ends up backfiring. You ever seen a dog chase its tail? Round and round it goes, never quite catching it. That's you, my friend, chasing after marriage. You're just spinning in circles while the rest of the world moves on. Now let's bring our feline friends back into the picture. You ever notice how cats have this uncanny ability to ignore you when you want their attention, Yet the moment you're busy, they're all up in your grill. It's like they've mastered the art of playing hard to get. And we humans, we fall for it every single time. So what can we learn from our furry companions? Well, it's simple. Stop the chase. Stop running after marriage like it's the last bus of the night. Take a step back, play it cool, and let things unfold naturally. I mean, think about it. You don't see cats running after each other, do you? know? they sit back, they observe, they wait for the perfect moment and then they pounce. And more often than not, they get their prey. So, the next time you're thinking of chasing after marriage, remember the cat. You might just end up with a lap full of fur and no cat. Ever been under pressure? Like that feeling when your mama's waiting with a slipper because you broke her favorite vase. Now imagine that pressure, but it's about getting hitched. Now let's get real for a moment. Society has this weird obsession with marriage. It's like a game of musical chairs. And when the music stops, you better be sitting next to someone with a ring in their pocket. But what happens when the pressure to get married becomes too much? Well, let me tell you, it ain't pretty. You've got Aunt Martha at every family gathering asking when you're going to settle down. Your friends are posting their wedding pictures all over social media like it's some kind of competition. And don't even get me started on those romantic comedies that make you feel like a loser if you're not madly in love by the time the credits roll. So what do you do? You start looking for love in all the wrong places. You start making decisions based on what you think you should be doing rather than what you want to be doing. And before you know it, you're standing at the altar with someone you barely know, wondering how you ended up in this mess. But here's the kicker. Just like you wouldn't rush cooking a steak, you shouldn't rush into marriage. You don't want a tough, overcooked piece of meat, do you? And you certainly don't want a tough, overcooked relationship. It's funny. 
We spend our lives being told to be patient, to take our time, to think things through. But when it comes to marriage, suddenly it's a sprint to the finish line. It's like we've been programmed to believe that our worth is tied to our marital status. But let me tell you, that's a load of bull. So before you buckle under the pressure, remember, no one likes a tough, overcooked steak. Ever seen a dude acting all cool and nonchalant at the club and all the ladies flock to him? Yeah, that's the secret sauce, my friends. Let's break it down. You see, there's something inherently attractive about someone who's not trying too hard, who's comfortable in their own skin, who's just, well, cool. It's like the universe has a funny way of rewarding those who aren't desperately clawing for attention. It's the same thing with marriage. You push too hard, you scare it away. You play it cool, and it might just come knocking at your door. Think about it. Have you ever been to a party where someone's trying way too hard to be the life of the party? Dancing like a maniac, talking a mile a minute, laughing a little too loud. It's exhausting, right? And kind of off-putting. Now on the flip side, picture that person who's just there enjoying the vibe, having genuine conversations, laughing when something's actually funny. That's the person you want to hang with, am I right? So let's apply this to the marriage game. When you're all gung-ho about tying the knot, it's like you've got desperation written all over your face. And let me tell you, desperation ain't a good look on anyone. It's like wearing a neon sign that says, marry me, I'm begging you. Not exactly swoon worthy, is it? But when you play it cool, when you're just living your life, enjoying your relationships, not obsessing over the next step, that's when magic happens. That's when people look at you and think, hey, this person's got their act together. They're not desperate for a ring. They're just cool. And that, my friends, is how you attract what you want without scaring it away. It's not about playing games or being aloof. It's about being comfortable with yourself and your life, ring or no ring. And trust me, that kind of confidence is way more attractive than any diamond could ever be. So the next time you're thinking of popping the question, remember, cool as a cucumber, my friend. Cool as a cucumber. So we've been yakking about marriage and all its crazy quirks. But what's the bottom line, you ask? Well, sit tight, because we're about to spill the tea. You see, we've been rapping about this chase for the ring, the hustle for the I do. We've seen how when marriage becomes a must, things can go sideways real quick. It's like trying to hold water in your hands. The tighter you squeeze, the quicker it slips away. Remember when we chatted about playing it cool? That's right. The less you want it, the more likely it is to come knocking at your door. It's a paradox, ain't it? Like trying to catch a cat by running after it, you're just gonna end up out of breath and empty-handed. But sit down, chill, and that kitty might just come sauntering over. Here's the rub, folks. Love, marriage, it ain't a game of tag. You can't just chase it down and expect it to surrender. It's more like a dance, a delicate balance of give and take. And the moment you start stepping on toes, demanding your partner to commit, you're gonna end up dancing solo. So the bottom line, don't let the marriage mania get to your head. Keep it cool, keep it casual. Don't let the want turn into need, because the moment it does, you're setting yourself up for a heartbreak. Now, I ain't saying you shouldn't want marriage. Nah, all I'm saying is don't let it define you. Don't let it become the end all be all of your existence. Remember, you're a whole person with or without that ring. So remember folks, in the game of love, sometimes the best move is not to play. If you dug this content, show some love by smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to check out our other videos. Peace out.